Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Finally getting into it. It's the DJI FPV Combo. Their race drone, it finally came out. Um, I've been on spring break, so this actually came in before I left and I didn't get a chance to bring it with me. Today we are going to be starting the series. As you can see here, I've got the full combo kit. I've got the motion controller and I've got the fly more kit, which gives you two extra batteries and this, uh, this little multi-charger here. There's also some brace arms you can get for the drone if you think you're gonna be doing like close proximity, really hardcore flying. So like I always do, we're gonna get really in-depth into this kit. Uh, this video is just gonna be the unboxing, taking everything out, seeing how it looks really close up. We're really gonna zoom in and check the parts. We'll boot it up on the screen. I'll show you how to do updating. We'll show you how to do getting everything up and operational. And then the next video, we're going to be going outside doing our initial test flight. And then we're going to be doing range tests. We're going to be seeing what kind of cinematic video we can get and just how far we can push this thing, how hard we can push it in the reviews to come. So don't miss the series. Subscribe right now and let's get started. Okay guys, so first off, um, this is not a cheap drone. I mean, this thing cost me, I think it was $1,800 altogether. That's including the fly more, the motion controller where you can fly just with this motion controller by moving your hand around and stuff. And then of course the full combo kit. Since I've been doing this for a while, I like to show like my first reactions to things, you know? And um, that's usually the most pure kind of reaction you can get with somebody with some experience with drones. And you know, it also might help you if you're confused on how to open the box up. There's a little bit of tape there, a little tape there. And what does this thing do? Let's see, oh, it's got one more piece of tape here. So they really seal this good. Even the box that was shipped in, they had that tamper-proof tape. Um, DJI is really good at making sure nobody tampers with your products. Looks like we're gonna lift these things up first. There we go. And then the whole top. There's another view of the drone if you wanted to see what that looks like on the front of the box. That's how it's gonna be flying straight. Pretty interesting, huh? They almost made it like a plane drone where you have these kind of airfoils here on the arms. They made them like teardrop. Anyway, that's kind of how it looks when it's facing full forward. So it's a pretty aggressive looking uh, product here and let's flip this open first time viewing with you guys so Let's see what we got and check this thing out guys. So we have just right on top. We have the v2 goggles the differences between the v1 and the v2 I think it's just mainly internally uh, better electronics But the goggles they really look just exactly the same on the outside nice little protection Stickers there and it says warning keep the lens away from direct sunlight. So of course I'm having a little bit of difficulty taking these off, but let's try again. There we go. There's one boy This is like a little challenge more challenging than I thought there we go. So don't point those in the sunlight It's okay if this side points in the sunlight, but never point those in the sunlight. So it looks basically the same um, Even the padding and everything looks the same. Of course now you can buy alternate padding for the goggles, but anyway Version 2 goggles, a little bit different inside, but the outsides look exactly the same as the old ones. The only other thing is the drone itself, so here it is. And I gotta say, my goodness, this thing is heavy. Holy smokes. This thing literally feels like it weighs a couple pounds. I'm not kidding either. This is a heavy product here for a, a little race drone. And look at that, they have the battery already preset, pre-installed. This thing looks really radical, really striking, pretty amazing. And remember what I was talking about? Like these arms are almost like wings. Let's see if we can get in here just a little bit closer and really look at that shape. So it's, it's almost like an airplane wing, like a small airplane wing. You see how this one's pointing more that way? And then this one, is pointing even a little more up than the back. So you've got a really interesting wing arm design. I'm thinking that's the reason why this can fly so long. They're claiming this thing can fly for like something like 20 minutes or something. And that's pretty unheard of for like a high powered race drone. 
And so we're getting a little bit of lift with these wing arms here. Anyway, guys, before I get too far into this, I mean, it just feels like such a solid and heavy thing. Like it won't even fly, but you know it will. Some sensors on the bottom there. We're gonna get way more in depth in this. I just want to put this down and I wanna go more into the box before we get too far into the drone. Here's everything else in the box. So we have pair of propellers, pair of propellers B. So that was A, this is B. Here is the controller. So DJI's new FPV controller introduced with this FPV drone, never before seen. Extra top shell, goggles antennas, headband for the goggles, a cable, and the manuals are in this one. AC power adapter and the goggles battery. All right, so I'm gonna put these on the side. We got our propellers and all of our extra accessories here. And let's just really check out this drone first and check this thing out. So there's the motors. There's no writing on the motors. It's got quick release props with a spring here right on there. See that spring? Counterclockwise and clockwise, right? They're gonna be diagonal for uh, quadcopters or multi-rotors. And there is just cooling heat sinks all over the place on this thing. Look at this, aluminum or magnesium, I know DJI drones use a lot of magnesium in their products and for weight, and I'd assume this is magnesium. Uh, and over here, look at all these just littered with um, hex screws all over the place, even under the plastic. You can see all these hex screws. Uh, really interesting. Let's just get really close up here so you guys can see all this stuff. There's the gimbal cover, really cool looking gimbal cover forward obstacle avoidance sensor. So if you guys were new to FPV, you know, this might be the drone for you because I, I heard if you're in like beginner mode, easy mode, it will avoid obstacles uh, that pop up in front of it. So, you know, if you're learning how to fly FPV, this may be a good one for you. Just turning it around another vent and heat sink right here. So that's gonna either be that aluminum or magnesium there up at the top airflow probably flowing through the shell all the way to the back and man this i'm assuming this battery is going to take up most of this thing it's going to be most of the weight this thing's already fully plugged in so from the box look at this this is the plug in the back it's already completely plugged into the drone um, and let's just take this battery out so there's these tabs on both sides that we're going to push and it just pulls right out so yeah, the battery is just about half the weight. This is this just got really light. Here's the battery here. Let's check this out for a second. So of course they're gonna make everything a lot more durable with this kind of drone than their other drones because this is meant to get aggressive, close proximity to things. So you can see how they encase the battery in this pretty hard plastic frame. Nothing really to it except for this little cable clip that pushes in. It's almost like a proprietary XT60 kind of connector. You see that there where it has kind of rounded area on the right and then this is more of a flat area on the left there if we're looking straight at it. Let's flip this battery around. Man, it's really microscopic but I'm going to see if I can zoom in and give you guys a little bit of a picture of this. Okay, so trying to zoom in here and guys, this is a 6S battery. So 22 volt battery pretty amazing they're going for a very high power 6s battery here and that's because you get more power efficiency the higher voltage you go and also of course you get more of that uh, punch right so if the drone needs to really move around obstacles and punch left and right up and down you're going to be able to do that with a high powered battery like this and this is also 2000 milliamp hours so you know, when you have multiple cells, so there's six cells stacked up in here, your voltage goes up, but your actually capacity doesn't go up because these are all in series. If you're to put them in parallel, then you'd have more capacity so that 2000 mAh would go up, but your voltage would stay low. So they chose to do a small capacity 2000 milliamp hour battery, which isn't really small for race drones, but you can see how big it gets when you start putting them into series and upping the voltage. Okay, so a pretty amazing radical 
change in battery technology from DJI. There's a couple of things on the craft, a couple of stickers. So I'm going to remove these. This just looks like a, a little protection sticker you want to take off when you're taking off that plastic uh, gimbal cover on the top. And anything else? I'm seeing a couple of stickers here on the arm. So we have a B here. And that's just to tell you which propellers go where. So the B propellers are going to be on the black top motors. And then the A propellers, they make it real simple, are going to be on those red notched top propellers. So pretty simple to understand that. So you're going to want to take all these stickers off. Because of course anything, if you leave these stickers on, is going to create some kind of drag when you're flying. And you don't want that to be happening. You just want the thing to be as efficient and optimal while you're flying as possible. Okay, so moving on, let's just look inside the battery compartment real quick. So again, that's where the battery is going to plug in. And it has kind of that flip down plug we were looking at over here on the battery. So you don't always have to have it plugged in, but you can have it inserted. And how we're inserting, very simple. Just basically pushing it in like this. The notches all line up. So once you just get it right in there and you push, it just really clicks. And I kind of like that, how you don't have to plug it in right away and put power into it if you don't want to. It kind of surprises me that actually this was plugged in from the factory. It's kind of interesting. Usually with DJI batteries, you need to charge them once before they're even active. So if I push this little guy here, this is a little battery indicator. You see how nothing's coming up because you need to do an initial charge before they'll even power on. If you see how if I push it in without a click, it feels like it's kind of in, but it'll just pull right out. So you want to make sure you give it that extra push and give it a tug so you're not having your battery fly out in mid-flight. While we have it on this angle, let's just spin it down a little bit so we can get a good view of all these sensors. So this is going to be an LED light here. Let's see this tri sensor little cluster here. LED light, and then these should be laser sensors. And then these are two downward optical sensors. Wow. So look at all these guys we have on the bottom, kind of like their other camera drones. They're really kind of going all out with this thing. So front obstacle, bottom obstacle on their optical sensors. So these are actually cameras. And then we have our laser for kind of like range from the ground and then our LED light again. And then we've got all of these, uh, like I was saying, hex screws everywhere. So this looks like it's going to be easy to work on, kind of easy to pull things apart. Um, so we'll just do one more revolution here. Check it out. Got a little DJ logo on top. And, uh, and then we'll start pulling things apart. So... That's basically it in a nutshell. And all we need to do now is take off this front cover. So that's done by what? By just pulling this, that's it. So nice and easy click, pulls that off. Zoom in here, take a little bit of a closer look. And this does have some side guards here, actually on the bottom. Hmm. I guess that's just for shipping, maybe rub it, rubbing up against the plastic so peel this thing off well, actually it goes all the way around okay all the way around and there it is so 4k 60 frame per second camera built in so probably using some of the same technology as their osmo action remember the osmo action i did do a review on that it's a waterproof all-in-one camera of course this isn't going to be waterproof on this craft but I'd imagine it's going to be using some of the same technology as that camera because that is a very large lens, um, kind of neat. It's got this little protection hood over it in aluminum. The camera is not going to go side to side. So there is no, uh, I guess that would be pan stabilization. I would imagine there's going to be a little bit of electronic stabilization in there to dampen the left to right. But the f up to down does have stabilization. See that? So you're going to be able to tilt that probably as you fly. And it will also maintain wherever you keep it as the drone kind of goes like this. So we'll see how that all works in our flight test. But pretty amazing looking camera. Pretty nice. Nice job there.
So there's a little thing guy here, a little door that just pulls down. You can kind of pull it out and you see those two little uh, rubber kind of tabs that are holding the door on so the door doesn't fall out. And in here we've got uh, two slots. First of all, we have a USB type C and there's our memory card slot. So full onboard recording, you just slap your SD card in there. You're gonna wanna use a high speed SD card. I always have it linked down in the description of what I use so you don't have any glitches. I use a high speed SanDisk quality um, 4K Pro card in all of my DJI drones. So you don't have any possible glitches with using the wrong card. You just wanna use the best you possibly can. So there's your two ports there, pretty cool. And that just closes up just like that. The tabs slide in and then you snap that shut. Little DJI logo there too on the sensor cluster. It's like this whole black plastic cluster that is just bolted right up to the bottom. There's probably a ribbon cable going into the drone, into the main flight controller. But um, that's really all there is to it guys, LED lights. Really neat on the backs of the arms and on the backs of the motor pods. There's the feet. The feet do have, I don't think I touched base on this yet. The feet do have this little rubber kind of molded in notch here. You can see the separation between the rubber and the plastic. So that is on the front. Nothing on the back because it's actually sitting on the battery when it's sitting on the ground. And so the battery, if I leave this upside down, the battery actually has the back feet rubber. So this is two little tabs of rubber that it's gonna sit there on the ground that's molded right in to the battery. And remember with the Flymore combo I got back there, I got two extra batteries. So I'll have three total, plenty of flight time. If this thing flies for like 20 minutes per flight, then man, you've got like an hour of flight time so very comparable to some of their other, even just camera drones. And I'm attributing that to just how efficient they've got in their design and also these little winglet kind of arms, like I was saying before, very, very interesting. Putting in the battery and there you go, you can see how it sits on this rubber feet here and the battery down there when it's on the ground ready for action. So I think that is pretty in depth in actually just inspecting the drone. Here is the gimbal cover. We'll just pop this back on, see how easy it is to get on. And then we'll work our way into the other stuff we got in the box. So I'm gonna push the kind of the top in first and then let's see how this works. Push the bottom, nope. I'm gonna wanna make sure that camera is straight. There we go. So make sure the camera kind of slides in to the notches first. I think I was like torquing the camera in there and then I have the top pushed all the way up so it's kind of flush and then the bottom just kind of clicks in. There we go. Or just push it all at one time and everything kind of clicks in there. So will not really come off until you squeeze this. See how that kind of, just a real light little notch squeeze and there it goes and it's back on there. So I would always put that on when you're patch it, packaging it up and not racing it so you can protect that pretty cool looking camera. Okay guys, so bear with me moving on. As you know, my reviews are very in depth so you're gonna be here for a while so might as well make yourself comfortable just so you know what you're getting when you're spending this much money on a pretty amazing product like this. Little LEDs there to let you know how much the uh, controllers charge. Let's go ahead and press that. Half charge shipped. And again, I was mentioning the lanyard C1 button. These are pretty cool. Kind of like their other controllers. They have the little sticks in these little rubber grommets inside the arms, easy access. These are a little thinner than their other uh, kind of Mavic drones and stuff and mini drones. So you see that little screw? These are thin guys, so be careful with this. That just goes right into the gimbal screws on, give it a little bit of a tighten there. And uh, I'd imagine they're probably giving us an extra pair of these. So you could lose these in the grass a little easier because they seem smaller than uh, their other drone little separate sticks. So you see how we're just screwing both of those on. And there you go. So everything is spring loaded. You see that? Everything's snapping back. If you wanted to, you can go into here 
and you can take or loosen the spring or take it out. And so you can have kind of a um, no spring throttle like you do on most race drones. But this um, drone also has GPS in there. I forgot to mention there is GPS in here. So it has a return to home feature. You panic, you lose it, you go out of range. This thing will come right back and land where it took off. Uh, if something like that happens, of course, if you crash into something, good luck, you know, that's on you, but, um, it does have that return home GPS, just like their other, you know, high end camera drones or even their littler ones like the mini and one and mini two that I've done a lot of reviews on. So there's the USB type C connector right there for charging and back over to the bottom. There is a nice vent here for ventilation rubber grips here everything feels really fit and finish just like all the other uh products do for dji here's the antenna do you see that there so it's like a little spring load pop-up so of course this controller can be used and also we're going to unbox this one in just a little bit remember the motion controller or you don't even have to use this you just use that thing and fly it by tilting your hand and stuff so this is going to be the traditional style control with this little game controller if that's what you want to do but at least you have that option flipping it over to the back do have a couple of protection tapes here and take those off probably just for shipping purposes so things don't get scratched up anyway over here on the left trigger button it's just a one click return to home is going to be like a left click in and then record or pause is going to be um, the other side click on that button and then over here we have like a three-way switch for a new flyer. You want to keep it up N, I believe that's what that was. And then S is like standard where you can fly faster, but you don't have that front obstacle avoidance protection. And then you have manual mode, which is going to get you into the full manual where you can do flips, full manual control where it takes off self-leveling and all that stuff. We'll have to see if it still can possibly do like a GPS return to home, that would be kind of neat. There's another three-way switch on this side, right here, and this one, yeah, it's also a three-way. So, I'm not sure what this does yet, we'll have to figure that out, but it has a click up, a dot in the middle, and a click down. So possibly like quick camera access instead of um, using this guy here. So this is a gimbal roller. So it goes a little bit and then stops and clicks back just like DJI's other kind of gimbal down, up and down button. We've got a start and stop right here. So perhaps this is um, start and stop. There's a little M there for like a manual mode icon on there. So perhaps this is starting and stopping uh, manual mode and or arming the motors. And then we have our camera record, starting recording camera and possibly pictures. And that's about it, everything Looks pretty unique, pretty packed in there. Okay, next thing in the box was just the goggles, right? So same thing on the outside, basically, as the version one goggles. There's where we're gonna screw in our antennas. We'll check out those that are in the box in just a second. But yeah, to me, it looks just exactly the same. There's where we're gonna loop in our goggle strap on the sides. There's a little LED patch here to show you like what channel it's on. Up and down buttons there. These are just kind of cosmetic on the sides. Then over here on the bottom, we have our usual adjustment to adjust the distance between your eyes. There you go, you can see how moving those moves it back and forth. So everybody's eyes are a little bit different. So that will help you a little bit of venting there. And I think that's a headphone jack as well over there on the top. So power and headphone, a little reset switch there. On the other side, same as the other ones too. We've got a USB-C connection here. And we have our little micro SD card insert so you can record the screen on your goggles as well. Okay guys, so before we do get to the motion controller and the flymore kit over there, I do wanna unbox the stuff that all came in the main package with the drone. You are gonna apparently uh, get the goggles and everything included. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna start having a package without the goggles or without the controllers. So everything in that box. And as you can see, it's just a power brick. Uh, of course, with all this plastic all over it, I always like to take this off. So there is our power. And then this looks like our goggles battery. 
and we'll just pop out the goggle battery. So there we go. So hitting power on this, looks like it's just about half charged. And there's the plug-in USB Type-C. And the goggles battery is just like a 2S. Um, it's almost like the battery that came in the, the Mini 1. It's, it's basically a two 18650 cells, it feels like, in here. And it's like at 7.2 volt. So again, this is a thing I forgot to mention. So this is lithium ion hard cells. But the battery that comes in the drone here are lithium polymer. So remember while I was talking about how they were stacked up into a 6S configuration. Those are lithium polymer, which gives you more punch. Probably don't want to be using lithium ion 18650 cells in that kind of high power drone. That's why those are normally used for stuff that has a less amperage draw like a goggle battery. Okay, so in that box, um, we're missing a couple things. We need to still have the plug-in to the wall and the other cables to connect the battery to the goggles. So let's see what's in this other box here. So if I can pull this out without destroying it too bad. Come on now, there we go. Okay, there we go. There's another shell for the drone itself, different color, kind of a lime green shell. This might be good for, uh, you know, location, locating it if you land it in the grass or crash or something. So you got this kind of clear smoke shell that comes on it. And then you can also put this lime green one that's really washed out on the camera for some reason, but. All right, let's see what else we got. So that's what I was looking for. There's a USB type C, actually that's USB C to USB A. And then this is, there we go. There's the power to the goggles right there. So that's gonna pop in right here to power your goggles. And of course they have this little rubber band on there to hold everything. And then this guy here on the other end is gonna pop right into the goggle battery there. And that is how you're gonna power on. Here is uh, the wall plug for that charger. So a little piece of Velcro on there. And remember, this is just gonna go right into the brick. It's got that little figure eight type of deal. So that plugs in there. And then this little cap takes off and plugs into your wall for charging the battery. It looks like you could charge it just when the battery's in the drone or you can take it out. You can charge the battery direct, just like this, by plugging in. But remember, I got that uh, Flymore combo, which has that battery multi-charger. So we're gonna see how that works. Let's see what else we got in the box here. So a couple of other little baggies. There's the instruction manual and stuff. Nothing else in there. So there's a quick start guide here. There is our disclaimer and safety is always the thickest <laughs> These are the two extra controller sticks I was talking about. I'm not going to take those out right now. This looks like antennas for the goggles. So two in each bag. These are the antennas you're going to put right on the goggles just like this. So you just, doesn't matter which one is which. Just go ahead and tighten them up. Screw them on finger tight. Not too hard. Don't want to break the connector on there. Here's the other bag with the other two here. And same thing, just screwing them on just like this. Essentially the same exact look as the version one goggles, pretty much exactly. Other stuff, here is another cable. And this is gonna be a USB type A female. If you look in here, to a USB type C on the other end, just a short, short little jumper, which will enable us to take that cable there that came also. So if you did need to go from USB-C to USB-C, at least you can plug this in to this adapter. A little small Allen wrench, not gonna take that out right now. Let's just make sure we go through everything. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering where that was, the goggle strap. I would imagine they would have put maybe some little pocket on the goggle strap by now, but uh, there is nothing on here to put that battery on if you didn't wanna have it in your pocket. Velcro up through the top. And this is fully adjustable. You can see how much adjustment surface there is where this can Velcro all the way from here all the way down. So if you have a gigantic head, you're still gonna be able to use this. The same thing goes for the other straps. 
just real, real simple and self-explanatory. Uh, so from the inside out, and then just Velcro them all right in. Very, very simple, really nothing to explain here. Just Velcroing and matching up, and that's it. And there you go, you got your strap. You still can't charge everything at the same time unless you have another one of these cables, so they don't give you two in the box. So you're gonna wanna have like a USB-C cable if you also want to charge the goggles battery at the same time, or at least in unison with the other stuff. Boy, I know this is taking a while. Hang in there, we're gonna get through it. I just wanna make sure I go through everything in depth. So here we go, wow. Okay, so actually we're getting two full sets, guys. It says on the box there, propeller B. So we only need two of these. So awesome, we got a full extra set. So two full sets. I was thinking they're only gonna give us one for some reason. And then the other box here, we wanna open up and this should be our propeller A. So we need two of each. Okay, so I got two without the red in the middle and two with the red in the middle. And then we're putting the ones with the red in the middle right on the motors. Very simple, just push down and rotate clockwise for the ones with the red. See how that happened, really simple? Just basically, you're just gonna wanna put it in the little notch to the left of the red. You see there's these little tabs that come on the actual propellers. See that tab there on the bottom? and uh, push it over the spring shaft, just like there are other kinds of propellers. So pushing down on these, and these ones are gonna rotate the other way, and then you let up. And then double check them so they're not falling off. Awesome, so we don't need to deal with any lock nuts like you normally do on other race drones. Of course, why wouldn't DJI have something like this, right? And that's how it kinda looks with all the propellers on it, ready to go. So there we go guys, we got through what's included in the initial big box with the FPV, DJI FPV drone. Let's bust into first actually the Flymore kit because this is gonna give us that multi-charger and the extra batteries. And then we'll bust into the motion controller back there in just a second. Yes, first time opening this as well. So let's see what's in here. All right, there's that. And then just a couple of manuals here it is a couple of batteries. So same kind of batteries we got with the drone, just two more. And then this really simple little multi-charger, nothing really to it. It just has one input coming in this way, nothing even on the other side. And then that's where we're gonna plug in the three batteries right there. So let's see how that works. So there's our power brick, remember that came in the main package. And we could either charge one battery on this, but in this instance, we wanna put it in, just match up the angles. Can't put plug this in the wrong way. Match up the angles and then we've got these nice little notches on the sides here. And it's already lined up the right way as long as you put the battery in these little concave notches with the connector on that direction. And all we need to do, look at this, is plug the batteries in just like that. So this is the one that came with it right there. And these are the other two that came with the Flymore kit. None of the batteries are showing any power because they all need to be fully charged before our first flight. This is very industrial, look at this. It's very industrial looking. And um, I really like how they have these, these connectors with this kind of floppy cable here. Uh, this looks very industrial and durable. There is a little LED light right there. So you can make sure your charger is on. It does have these little rubber feet. So you could either, I guess, put your batteries like that or lay them down if you wanted. A little less slidey that way because it's touching the rubber feet on there, but it doesn't really seem like it matters whichever way you put it. You know, you can put it any way you want as long as these things are all plugged in nice and tight. Okay, guys, moving on to the next item. I do indeed have those three batteries on that Power Hub multi charger charging up, and they do indeed charge one at a time. 
So those are charging while we open up our motion controller. Now again, have not opened this at all yet. Let's take off this plastic. This kind of was really interesting to me. Um, this might be good for, you know, like beginners as well, because if you've never like used an RC controller, maybe for people that want either want a new experience in controlling things or have never used an RC product, this might be a little more easier to get into. There we go. So just opening it up. That's all that's in the box. We just got the controller. Isn't that interesting? It looks like a, like a joystick, the top of a joystick flight controller. You remember those older um, controllers that we used for like flight simulators? It looks like it's like exactly, that's what that is. Anyway, a little lanyard here we can put on the bottom right there. Uh, let's check this out. Little USB type C, if we unclip that guy, this is just gonna be the instructions on how to use the motion controller, so. But let's just see, like really inspect this thing close up and see what it's all about. So I have this button here. Now this is uh, just one push in. And on the right side, it says break. So say so you're flying this thing around, hit that, and it should just like stop, I guess, in the air. We have a button here for power. If I press it, let's see if we have any power on this thing. Yep, this one looks like it's about 60% charged. We have this little joystick here, M. So it's just a one push in. Now remember this thing has like a gyro inside so you're gonna be flying it, turning left and right. So it's kind of be, gonna be like, a, like an airplane type of flight. And then lock. So we'll have to see what that means. Lock there. Tilt, that's pretty cool. So possibly tilting our camera up and down while we're flying. And then recording. So start and stop recording our video. Excel right on the side of the trigger. Plastic here, and it has a spring load here, so slow speed, hopefully, too fast. So guys, this looks like it's gonna be pretty darn neat. I just opened up the instruction man manual just to see what's up. So it's almost like you can twist the controller. Here's the controller on the right, and here's the instructions. It's like you can twist it like this, or move it like this, and that will kind of adjust the yaw. The next segment down is like tilting the controller up and down like this. And all that is for, it looks like, is the camera. That's pretty cool. So you can tilt the camera up and down just by moving the controller. So this is gonna take a while to get used to, right? Pulling this trigger here, and that is gonna make it go forward. However you point this thing, is going, there's gonna be a dot in the middle of the screen. So when you pull the trigger and you move this controller, the dot in the middle, the circle in the middle of the screen is gonna be your center point and that's where the drone will fly to. So that'll be kind of cool, like if we can go through obstacles and stuff just by moving our hand, kind of like this. That'll be really awesome. I'm definitely gonna be testing this very thoroughly in our flight test. I'll probably do a flight test with just the remote controller, the handheld, and then I'll do one with just this and see how much either easier or harder it is to fly. That'll be lots of fun. So you may not need to put the lanyard on because this isn't like a Wii controller where you're gonna be slamming it and flying it around, right? But if you did wanna put it on, you just put this loop through this little hole here and then uh, put the whole wristband right back through the loop. Really easy and you can see how that just locks it on. Okay guys, almost to boot this thing up and see how it is updating and everything. But I just wanted to show you how to put these. Um, these are the braces, right? So if you're new to FPV, you may wanna think about getting these because these will really strengthen it if you're crashing and um, you won't be breaking the arms off quite as easy. Two of these guys and then we got this little baggie. And all we got in the baggie are two screws. Now these are Allen screws and I don't even see an Allen wrench in here. So you're gonna need to get your own Allen wrench because that one that came with the drone, that's too skinny. And then we have two over braces. So let's see how these go on. You wanna make the open side of the holes here. 
You want the cups to be up facing the top part of the drone. And then all you do, it's pretty easy, is slip these over. So this slips over the front. And you can see how it just kind of hugs the shape of it. So you can't really get it on wrong. It just hugs the shape of the light and everything goes up in there. And same thing for the back. You see how easy that was? That just popped on. So you can see how that's gonna make it way more sturdy if you're hitting things this way. This brace is gonna brace this front arm. If you're flying like this really fast, you hit this, it'll also brace the rear arm from pulling apart from the front. So you just get that much more durability from crashing. Keep in mind that there is gonna be a little extra weight, so your flight time is gonna drop and also more drag. There's this little slot in the back and you can see how the bottom is kind of that opened up portion. There actually is a little R in there. I don't know if you can see that over on the front top right here. There's a little R by that little nut. So you know that this is the right side if you're facing the drone out from you. And there's this little clip tab that goes in here. See how that just pushes right in there. And then the top just goes right over. That actually snapped together, snapped in, and you can see how that's hugging over the arm nice and tight. We need to put the little Allen screws they give us in the package, right in the bottom there, and then tighten that nice and tight with an Allen wrench. So if you don't have one already, you're gonna have to get some kind of Allen wrench. I can't believe they didn't just put one in the package. That's kind of a little bit of a negative there too. Come on DJI, just one more thing. Put a little five cent item in the package so people can put on their braces on their drone. Stop being so incredibly cheap and charging top dollar for your stuff. You can still see the lights there through these braces. I recommend definitely putting these on kind of like you would put on prop guards if you're a super beginner with regular drones. You know how you put on those propeller guards. Uh, definitely put these on if this is your first FPV drone. Anyway guys, again, this is gonna be a long one. Let's go ahead and get uh, this all linked up. We'll get the goggles. There's a process you have to do where you link it to your phone and you authorize all these things on your account. So that'll be the next step. Hang in there, we're almost done. Okay guys, you ready? Here we go. Finally getting into connecting everything up. So per DJI, they say to turn on the FPV drone first. Now, I just wanna to explain to you that this took about 20 minutes. See how if I push the button there to charge fully until the lights went off. Take this off first. Always wanna take the gimbal cover off of your drones before you even power them on. So I'm just doing a quick press, so the lights come on. Press and hold, just like all DJI drones. I'm gonna put this thing around here so you can see it. Wow, so that was kinda of crazy. These things were vibrating, it was making the noise. That thing's on, the camera went up and down, did a little self-check. Now what it says to do is turn on your goggles. Power cable into the goggle battery. Plug the other end into the goggles right here on that little port on the bottom right. In order to power the goggles on, we also have to press, press and hold until those go all the way up. You can hear the goggle fan go on and then check that out. We already have a link. Then what we need to do guys is we need to turn on the controller. So you go aircraft to goggles to controller, press, press and hold. That controller is gonna come up and what we should be seeing is we should be seeing a link almost immediately. Did you see that? Controller blinked. These lights stopped rapid blinking yellow and now they're blinking green and that's where this cable comes into play remember one end is going to go into here you're going to want to make sure you have that dji fly app installed in your phone from the android app store or the apple store i'm just going to plug right in here let's see what happens okay x hubson so i also have a hubson quadcopter app in here and it's saying you can also use the glasses that's kind of cool this is the android one plus 6t phone connect to aircraft it doesn't even see it i only can go between the mini mini 2 and mavic air okay guys let's try it with the ipad let's see what happens 
So you may need to borrow, if you have uh, Android, I guess maybe you need to borrow your wife's or friends or sons or daughters iPad, iPhone, let's see. Plug it in. I heard a chime. Nothing is auto launching. I'm gonna go into drones and I'm going to go into DJI Fly. And there it is. Wow, that was quick and easy. So again, they are just leaving us out with the Android, right? Doesn't work. Bummer. Update your software, DJI, because all your other stuff worked out of the box. Anyway, getting on, moving on, we have a disclaimer here. So we're going to have to read everything here and agree. That is a lot of stuff. Who's going to read all that? Who knows? But I'm going to agree to it. I have already my Gmail is already in there. I guess I got to enter my password. I'll be right back. Let me log in here and see if it does. Confirm account. Following devices will be linked. Aircraft goggles and remote controller is going to go to my email account that I have connected to DJI. So you got to do this, guys. Activate registering server. Restart aircraft to complete activation. Restarting will take around 30 seconds. It just turned it off automatically. It's turning it back on. Whoa, <laughs> that's great. It's like a, like a cyborg robot. They're going for some um, dramatic boot up sequence here with this one. Total different uh, startup chime. The controller just linked up again. I heard the double blink and activation successful done. DJI carry fresh. Okay, so now this pops up. Now I could possibly see getting this for this drone since this is a race drone fast you can really get in trouble you're going to be wanting to push the limits going close to the ground flying close proximity to things you might want to go ahead and get this um, dji carry fresh because they know you're going to be taking more risks with a race drone right so if i click more it's going to take you to the dji refresh site and so you can get that if you want to um, let's just go yeah so it's it's 199 you see that there $199 for one year. So up to you, okay? If you want to have two replacements, um, go ahead and you know pay the $199. If you think you can do without, then just cancel it. So I'm going to X out on the top left because I'm not going to get this. And there we go. So it kind of gives you a loop. They really want you to buy the Carry Fresh because they probably make a lot of money with it. Uh, I'm gonna cancel it. This is ridiculous. They haven't fixed this yet, so I can't do anything except Go out of the app How ridiculous is that right? So I got to go completely out and then back into the DJI App because I don't want to purchase the refresh. So it's like they corral you into purchasing this. So I'm back in the fly app There we go Look at this. User feedback. No. They just force you to go anything. This is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I want to exit. So there we go. See, I had to uh, shut down the whole app to even get out of purchasing that refresh. Like if you kind of know how to fly FPV drones and you don't want to get that. Let's go through an update so you guys know how to do this. 335 megabytes. Firmware update. Unable to take off. There you go, another con with DJI. Will not let you take off because guess what? They force you to update. Almost force you to buy the DJI Refresh? Give me a break. And they're gonna force you to update before they even let you fly the damn thing. Some of you DJI haters are gonna love this, but I'm kind of frustrated at this, at this point in time. I can't wait to fly it, but geez, man. Let me pick and kind of choose what I wanna do, you know? The update's going. I'm gonna click more. Tells you what it's doing. Going pretty quick, we're at 15%. And uh, what's new while it's updating? Added support for DJI motion controller. Okay, so no wonder they don't let you fly it until you do this update. I can see in certain situations, yeah. Added ability to take off or land by pressing lock button on motion controller. Wasn't that what it's supposed to do in the first place? Added tutorial videos 
for motion controller and goggles, okay. Added calibration for motion controller. Added ability to switch goggles to DJI digital FPV system. What the heck? So does that mean you couldn't use it with uh, the air unit before? Man, locking this stuff down. So again, kind of like early release stuff where they should have had this stuff done before they released it. But now it's having to update to make everything actually work properly. Um, added turtle mode. There you go. Well, that's, that's really beneficial. If your drone flips over, turtle mode is it makes a couple of the props whoop, flip it back over. It reverses them or it just powers one set of props and it just flips back over. You may have seen me do it in my little um, FPV around the house flight. Go ahead and check that video will be up there. If you want to check how to do turtle mode in uh, analog FPV drones. So that is a big bonus there, the turtle mode. So thank you DJI for doing that. Added coordinated turn to sport mode when using a remote controller. Coordinated turn to sport mode. Who knows what the heck that means, man. Let's get some like English writers in here. Um, added find my drone under safety settings. Okay, good. good. Kind of like you can do with the other DJI drones, find my drones. That is a good feature. So turtle mode and find my drone mode, very good added features. Ability to set camera exposure value manually, great. Optimize flight performance in all flight modes, great. Improve transmission stability between air unit and ground unit, okay. Mostly great. Um, updates and I'm glad I'm doing this update. So we're at 24% and it's gonna take a while. Okay guys, just checking in and getting a little bit scared. This is why you wanna charge everything up fully. I did not charge the goggle battery pack up fully. It was only less than half charge. Now the goggles are beeping like it's in low power mode. So do you hear that beeping there? Um, the controller, no problem. It's got Looks like about 60 to 75% charge. But this thing is taking forever to update. So what I might need to do is just quickly switch to this power bank I have. See on the bottom right, 4% power in the goggles and it's still going through this update. Taking a lot longer than I thought it would, so, but. Network connection required. Okay, so that just popped up. I'm gonna press okay. Download failed, what? So anyway, let me let me charge this up and we'll try again, boy. So that's why you wanna charge everything up before you even start with this thing. Because as you can see, can't even fly or anything without doing this. And this looked like it was gonna take like an hour or more to update, so. Very frustrated right now, but partially my fault because I didn't charge all this stuff up. So let me charge it all up fully and so we can complete this update. Okay guys, got everything charged up. Let's try that again. So the update's still there even though it didn't finish. And it's downloading, so let's go more. Hopefully this time we don't lose our Wi-Fi connection. I am connected to Wi-Fi and everything. So maybe that was just a glitch on my home Wi-Fi. But just remember guys, just like all DJI products, man, when you first get this thing, you're going to have to use pretty much one battery for updating. Okay, so just basically know that you're not gonna be up and flying right away. And that's kind of the irritating thing about DJI products. Uh, I guess in a way, aside from all my ranting and raving, at least you're getting updates that are hopefully gonna be making the product quote unquote better. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it run through this update again. Hopefully we don't have any more problems. Anyway, I'll pop in when this thing's just about done. All right, so just touch and base. It seems like the controller just restarted or beeped twice and you can see it there with its two middle lights flashing. And uh, that's kind of telling me that the controller is probably doing a firmware update as well. The controller just rebooted and there it is blinking again. The drone, basically the back lights were flashing super yellow. There we go, the controller is connected again. We're at 89% on the update. It seemed to be installing between 10 and 15 seconds 
uh, per percent. There we go. Saw the drone over there rebooting itself. And this should indicate kind of a wrap up here pretty soon. Okay guys, looks like it is finally done. I have to say that it did take uh, about five more minutes, stuck at 91%. Rebooted the drone three times, and then it was stuck at 96%, and rebooted the controller two times, and then it finally went to 100%, 100%. took about 10 more minutes the second time when it was stuck at 96%. So really honestly, give yourself like the better of one or two hours even if you need to charge all this stuff up first. So more like two hours when you open this thing up to make sure you get everything updated and ready to go. The goggles now have the FPV uh, back in there. You can see that before it was just a black screen when it was updating. Uh, just saying it was updating, but it looks like we are ready to go. So let's go ahead and just um, X out of this. It says firmware installed, fly safe, requires update. So I'm going to go ahead and update this. This is kind of the um, network that just updates for the areas you cannot fly in, like airports and whatnot. DJI Carry Fresh is available for purchase within the first 48 hours of activating DJI FPV. So remember, that's kind of insurance for the $200 for two replacements. Make sure you do get that within 48 hours. Um, if you're a beginner drone flyer, that might be good for you to have for like your first year. Anyway, let's just click on Go Fly, and there we go. So there I am sitting there with the FPV. Let's turn this thing around. Cool. There's our little stormtrooper and other figures there at the front of the table. So what I'm going to do real quick is maybe just go through some of the features. Um, it's kind of cool that you can see this on your iPad. So in essence, you could have a dual screen set up. Let me see if I can still see it in here. Yeah, so I'm seeing the exact same thing in the goggles. If you leave your tablet or phone connected maybe you can have a um, bystander watching this as you fly look at that super fluid too no lag whatsoever that's awesome so if you wanted to do that it looks like an option so we're going to be wrapping this up now and i just really wanted to show you guys really quick with a controller uh, what you could do as far as tilting the camera so we've got this roller here on the bottom left of the controller if you watch the drone's camera over there, you see how you can roll it up and down? So wow, you can go way high with it too. So I guess wherever you leave it, that's kind of where it's gonna maintain when you're flying. So you can see how I can also, so this is basically what I'm seeing in the, the goggles, except on the screen, it looks like you don't have any of the um, telemetry or displays on your power and all that stuff and your speed but you will have that in the goggles. Both sticks in and down or out and down should arm it. There we go. So I'm not taking off, I just arm the motors. You can hear it there in the background. It's been about 15 seconds, so I'm gonna pull down on the throttle. You can see how they go off. So let me bust out the motion controller and I'm charging that right now. Let's just see, I don't think you can have them both synced at the same time. There's a sync process you have to do with the goggles or the drone in order to use that motion controller. So let's do that. Thanks for hanging in there. I know this is long. Let's just connect that motion controller and then we'll be done with this initial unboxing. Okay guys, you know what? I'm just gonna leave everything as it is and let's see if we can link both the regular controller and the motion controller together. So what we'll do first is grab the drone here Press and hold on the power until we see the beeping. Okay, there we go. So that means it's in kind of linking mode. You see how that battery is going up and down. And then we'll press the motion controller. It looks like the FPV and everything went off. This controller also looks like it disconnected. So let's see what happens. Pressing and holding the motion controller button. There we go, searching, it's doing that same kind of thing. Got video back on the drone. It's almost like it reconnected to this. So it's kind of like you gotta have this off perhaps. Let me try that again. Let me turn this controller off. Okay. So this just thinks it lost connection. Press and hold.
And there we go, as soon as I did that, the motion controller linked up. And now check it out, I have a different screen activating DJI FPV Agree. So I gotta go through this kind of activation sequence again for the motion controller, but it does show it's linked up and the power lights are on solid. You see that there? So that's good to know. There goes the drone rebooting. It looks like everything is ready to go. It does seem like you only can have one controller connected at a time, so no dual control it doesn't seem like on this drone. So it's either the motion controller or the standard controller it comes with, okay guys? So it does need an update. So let's do that real quick. I'm just clicking update on the screen. Let's hit more for what's happening. Hopefully this goes really quick. Beep again and there it goes. There goes the motion controller updating. You can see the percentage on the screen, 42%. It seems like a few seconds per percentage. Okay, and it looks like that did it. Basically that took about five minutes. The controller rebooted. The drone didn't really reboot, it just reconnected to the controller, the motion controller. And as you can see over here on the screen of the iPad, it is done and good to go. So DJI firmware is installed. Let's click X out of that. Of course, it's gonna keep telling you about the care refresh, right? So if you wanna get that, you can still get that. Go fly FPV and there we go. Anyway, I think that's just about wrapping it up. I really do think we went through everything on that second charge, you can see we're down by one dot on the goggle um, battery here. So really nothing else to do here except fly, right guys? I hope that was informative for you. You learned a lot. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Really anxious to get this thing going. I just wanna test one more thing with this little lever on the left. Yep, we can move the camera up and down, awesome. So anyway, guys, I think that wraps it up. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Don't forget all the products I review are down below, down in the description where you can get them. And also make sure you subscribe because this is an in-depth series. Not only are we doing the unboxing and how to hook everything up, but we're also going out and we're testing everything in the field, how it's gonna work with a regular controller, how it's gonna work with a motion controller. We're gonna do range testing on this. This is using that long range DJI FPV. And we're just gonna see how everything works. We can do a little bit more close proximity flying, range testing, all kinds of stuff. So don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned and click that notification so you guys know when the next video is gonna come out for this drone and many others. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.